Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, my watch says it's 9 o'clock, so we will start the meeting of the Special Rules Committee. We're here to hear two bills, House Bill 978, which I'm the author of and I will present, and House Bill 941, which I believe we have the representative uh, Minton authored, and we'll have him present that in just a moment. Just to review with everybody, all of our committee meetings are now being recorded. This is uh, going out all streaming live over the internet and will be archived. I've asked our committee members, should they speak, to turn on their microphones. And uh, if, if anybody in the audience addresses us, please come to the podium and address the microphone because this will be going out again streamed live on the internet and also archived for posterity. So you will be a TV star after today. Um, so with that, I'm Calvin Hill. Chairman of the committee, to my right is Mike uh, Callen, who's our vice chairman, and to the right of him, Doug Holt, who's our secretary. And on the far right, if I can put it that way, is our legislative council, uh, Mr. Sewell. And on my left is Sandra Woody, who is our committee aide. And Deanna Grant, we want to welcome you. She's our intern this year, and we'll be working with the committee. To start off, I'd like to introduce House Bill 978. This is a bill that is a direct result of a special subcommittee that was called for last year by Senate Resolution 88. That resolution requested a statue to be erected and placed on the Capitol grounds. At that time, there was another Senate resolution that had come over and requested a portrait for a uh, famous war hero to be painted and placed inside the Capitol. When those two bills or those two resolutions, resolutions came to our committee, we looked at them and reviewed and tried to figure out if there was some sort of criteria for things like paintings and statues. And we found there really was not. There was some ancient stuff uh, on a commission that, did no, that no longer existed. There was nobody on it. So we created the subcommittee to look into this and create a format that laid out exactly what requirements would be necessary for somebody to be recognized and have that recognition placed as either a statue or a piece of art or other recognition on the Capitol grounds. And this bill is the, the result of that because we felt for somebody to be recognized, no matter how much of a hero they were, for example, a war hero, if it was not significant to Georgia's history, it probably should not have a place on the Capitol grounds, because this should be something that is part of Georgia's history. That, that's our purpose here in, in the Arts Commission. So we created a, a Capitol Art Standard Commission that is going to have nine members, one of which is appointed by the governor, and that will be the chairperson, one member by the Senate, one member by the House, and one member each by the, appointed by the Georgia Historical Society, the Georgia Council for Humanities, and the Georgia Council for the Arts. And then a member by the Board of Regents and the Georgia Foundation for Independent Colleges, each of whom must be proficient in the history of Georgia. So the commission is actually going to be not just people with an opinion or a political opinion of who they want to have on you know, a statue made of, but these are people that understand art, the value of good art, and they understand the history of, of Georgia. Um, with that, you have the bill in front of you if you want to read the, uh, the details, but that pretty much capitalizes it. And I'm open to uh, questions from the committee. Now. In uh, this bill, does is there anything that places a moratorium on artwork now that you, in the meantime, until this bill comes into effect? No, we really can't do anything until this bill comes into effect, and hopefully we'll pass it through uh, very shortly. What it will require in the future is that in a two-year session, the first year of a two-year legislative session will be when a legislator, for example, might request some of the artwork through a resolution, and then it would go to this commission, and should they recommend it, then it would come back to the legislature, 
with their recommendation and be voted on in the second year. Um, as to this date, of course, we can't do anything to the existing uh, artwork or uh, any existing requests. This can only be effective after the, the date that it goes into law. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you. Uh, having read the bill, I notice you have extensive language for defining the process and uh, looks like to avoid any potential conflicts um, in the course of possible changes of the bill prior to it being signed so that it doesn't come to the commission until after a bill has been passed and then any changes subsequent to it, if I understand correctly, um, are not valid because it's the bill as passed that is what the, chain, the uh, um, commission will consider. That's correct. Thank you, sir. And if there are no more questions on this, I would like to bring it to uh, a vote of the committee. And uh, I move that we give it a uh, recommended, do pass recommendation out of here and send it to rule. All in favor? Give me a second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. It passes the end. Thank you very much. And we now have uh, House Bill 941. Uh, Representative Benham, Benham, I believe, will be presenting this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, appreciate you allowing me to come before you to present House Bill 941. What uh, 941 does is to amend Article 3 of Chapter 13 of Title 45, and that is to recognize the religious heritage of America. And in this bill, we are asking that the Secretary of State to prepare, doc prepare these documents related to the, that heritage and direct, direct the Attorney General to defend counties which display these documents. Uh, in the bill summary that uh, was given to you, I, I put down there uh, as to what problems or opportunities the bill address, uh, I, I believe that this solves the problem of displaying certain documents in county courthouses, and it shows the role of religion in the constitutional history of both America and Georgia. And how does this bill address the problem? Uh, it sets up a uniform, sound, distinctive, and appropriate presentation of the study of the role of religion in the constitutional history of uh, America and Georgia, uh, which may be displayed in governmental buildings throughout Georgia. Uh, the bill of the documents that are listed in my uh, bill at this time are the Mayflower Compact, the Ten Commandments, and the Declaration of Independence. And finally, what factual evidence is the bill based upon? Uh, the factual and understood histories of the U.S. and Georgia, uh, the importance of these documents, both religiously and constitutionally. As to the four goals that uh, they have asked us to look at, uh, does it reduce the size of government, strengthen the traditional family structure, reduce the tax burden on our citizens, uh, increase personal responsibility, uh, it is uh, a resounding yes to all those except, number one, I'm not sure whether it reduces or increases the size of government, so uh, remain neutral on that. I ask for your favorable consideration on this bill. Uh, I feel like this is a bill that uh, uh, will receive favorable consideration not only uh, in uh, other committees but also on the floor of the House. Uh, does the committee have any questions of me? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for bringing this bill before us. Um, just one simple question. Um, having read this, um, I assume your purpose is to show the historical continuity of thought that has led from the founding of this nation, uh, well, really from the beginning of settlement through the founding of the nation and um, the role that um, religion played in the thinking of all of those steps as time passed and thus to educate the public in that thinking to realize why those foundations exist and how important they are to our country. That's correct, uh, uh, Representative Hope. I do want to mention that this does not require any county government to display these documents, but if they choose to do so, that, that this would be an appropriate display. 
in the, in the courthouses. Thank you. Any other questions? Do, do you anticipate um, the challenge on this if it's passed? The challenge as far as constitutionality of it, I, I feel like that it will withstand any uh, constitutional challenge because we are not displaying just one document uh, where those challenges have come in. We are displaying three, at least three documents that, that deal with the religious heritage and shows how uh, religion played a role in the setting up of our government. Uh, they will be displayed together, not separately as in, as in the past. I appreciate um, your work on this, Representative Benton. Uh, I think this is, a, this is a good bill, something we can pass, something Georgia would be in favor of. I appreciate you bringing it before us today. Uh, thank the committee for, uh, for hearing me on this. I, there are several members here that co-signed on this. I didn't know whether you might want to hear from, from them on this or not. So uh, uh, I appreciate the committee hearing me today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative Benton. Yes, we would like to hear from each and every person if you'd come up and, for the record, identify yourself. So we'll have that on, on tape, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, <clears throat> Representative Terry England from District 108, please excuse my voice this morning. It seems as though the changing weather tends to change the volume and the consistency of the voice. Um, being a, uh, the elected member representing the majority of the part of Barrett County uh, that I come from, the Ten Commandments bill has been something on the mind of our voters at home for quite a while. We had a uh, uh, display there in our courthouse that was challenged by the ACLU this Past, over the past two years and the settlement was finally reached. The, I don't think anybody can argue uh, effectively that the Ten Commandments did not and does not contribute significantly to our Constitution and the way that uh, our, our country was founded. Um, while the Ten Commandments and, and Scripture are not quoted directly in, in any of these documents, the premise and the understanding of how to treat individuals one-on-one -on -one or in business relationships or whatever else, however we may deal with one another, those premises are laid out in the Ten Commandments and in Scripture as far as that goes. And I don't think anyone could argue effectively that that was not the intention of the Founding Fathers, was to make sure that every man, woman, and child are created equal in this great country and that each one would be represented uh, in, a, in a fair in an equitable manner. Um, speaking to the constitutional challenge portion of, of what Representative Cowan was asking a few minutes ago, there have already been a, a couple of what could be considered test cases where the Ten Commandments were displayed in conjunction with other documents that the Supreme Court has more or less said that as long as they're shown together with these other documents in a historical context, then, then they had no problem with. So, one, do we expect a constitutional challenge? Yes, more than likely. Two, do we think we can win it? Yes, we do. And probably the, the guarantee that counties have that they're securing and in, uh, showing these documents would be that the state attorney general would then be directed to defend those counties instead of the counties having to take and defend themselves, much as had happened uh, uh, in Barra County. Uh, we, we were fortunate that Ten Commandments Georgia came up and were able to ante up and pay the attorney's fees that, that were involved. However, the county still had to pay um, the other side's attorney's fees plus a punitive damage. But anyway, I appreciate your consideration. Uh, look forward to your support and would ask for favorable consideration. Thank you. Any, any questions? questions? I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Representative Henson Mosley from Jessup, Georgia. Now, I wasn't born when the Mayflower Compact was, was written, but I was born in 1932, October the 21st. Herbert Hoover was president, soon after Franklin Roosevelt was sworn in. All of the early presidents during my lifetime used our scriptures and uh, other documents to emphasize honesty, such as George Washington's picture on the classroom wall. Uh, I cannot tell a lie. That, that was teaching values. 
And I don't think that our people should have to forego being reminded that we should be honest, we should tell the truth, we should not covet another man's wife, we should not do various things like that. I think this is just good, honest uh, government. And uh, I'm uh, wholeheartedly behind this. I'm not from Vera County, but I, I fully support this. I think it's a good piece of legislation, uh, and uh, I intend to support it. Thank you for inviting me here. Any questions? Thank you very much, Representative Mosley. Yeah, Representative Bull. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, in other words, uh, to sort of summarize, in addition to showing the um, foundations upon which our government was derived intellectually, um, this bill also addresses the foundations of the American character. American character, that's correct. And, and of course, I'll, I'll go a little further. During my lifetime, I've seen some changes. And all the changes I see is not good. And uh, I personally think that we need to uh, get back to the value system and avoid some of the things that we're going through in this country. We got the greatest country in the world, but things are changing. Uh, I can see it. You can see it, can't you, Mr. Chairman? Calvin? Thank you for inviting me here. Any other questions? Thank you very much. I appreciate you folks hearing that this morning. Thank you. Appreciate your testimony. Are there any other representatives? Good morning, Mr. Chairman and other committee uh, members. Uh, and I'm Representative Maddox, and I'm one of the co-signers of House Bill 941. And you all have heard from the author and the other uh, gentleman, Mr. Uh, Mosley. And I am honored to be one of the co-signers of this bill. You know, our country was founded on freedom of religion, and it's one of the uh, Ten Commandments that we talked about a while ago. And uh, so what I would like to say is that uh, this is something I am proud to endorse. I think we should always be have the freedom to hang whatever that the county decides to put or county or state uh, buildings wants to put up as long as it's not contradictory to the Constitution. So with that, I'll say thank you for allowing me to come here this morning. Thank you very much, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address this bill? Uh, Representative Benton, if I may, I have a question or, or two. I'm sorry. I have a question or two. If you could please come back to the, uh, the podium and there are more technical questions. Okay. Um, because this bill requires the Attorney General to defend the counties, have you had an opportunity to talk to the Attorney General um, about a couple of things, and I realize you're not going to get a definitive legal opinion without a case, but have you had a chance to, to get an opinion from them as to how they would feel about suffering the, the cost and time to defend this if it, if it comes to a uh, court battle? No, sir, I haven't. Okay. Um, just, what do you feel about our, legally, our ability to find the Attorney General defending a, a county. What is our, our legal position on that? I Sometimes I feel a little uncomfortable, but I don't know what the procedure is. Mr. Chairman, it's not a question I anticipated, but my initial answer is that I believe that uh, the state constitution provides that the Attorney General will have certain duties and such other duties as shall be prescribed by the law. This, of course, is passed by the General Assembly and become a law prescribing duties for the Attorney General. So my initial reaction is it seems certainly within the lawmaking power to make that a duty right in our office. Okay, very good. And I will undertake, if I may, Mr. Chairman, to study the documents further and report back to you promptly if I find anything that contradicts the initial reading. I would appreciate that. And Representative Benton, because of that, that question, and, and I'd like to be comfortable with everybody, would you please um, talk to the Attorney General's office? Okay. And, and if you'd like, I'd, I'd be glad to, to have an informal discussion with them. Again, I realize that we're not going to get a legal opinion, 
but I believe we should uh, offer them the consideration of what we're proposing here. Um, I feel very good about this bill, but I, I think before we bring it to a vote that I would like to, to see what their comfort level is with it. Perhaps they might suggest, uh, for example, some other wording that would make it easier for them to defend, et cetera, because I'm sure they're, they're familiar with this. And then um, after that discussion and, and their comfort level, then we can bring it back and have a vote on it because I feel it's a very good bill conceptually. I, I like the contents. I, I believe the members of the committee are in the, uh, the same opinion. Our country was founded on the tenets of, of the Ten Commandments and the, the Mayflower Compact and the Declaration of Independence. And if our nation's capital can have them up in front of their uh, Supreme Court, I certainly can't see why we can't do it in the counties. I just like that little comfort level and the courtesy of, of discussion with the Attorney General's office. Okay. Uh, do you, is there a timetable that I need to, is there, in other words, do I need to do it today to come back to y'all this week or is there? No, we'll probably not meet until the week after next being in recess next week. Um, so anytime between now, there, there's no immediate timetable. When you get that and get back with us, we'll, we'll schedule another uh, meeting to discuss that and, and to uh, take a vote on the bill. Okay. So it'll be, it'll be up to your discretion as, as to when you can do that. All right. And as I said, I'd, I'd be more than happy if you would all desire to meet with you and the Attorney General too. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there any other business that needs to be discussed this meeting? Okay. With that, I thank everybody for attending. We thank you for the presentation of the bill.